Okay, this is incredibly cold. Oh my god. Oh, this is like two degrees. Just a point of clarification. Oh my. Uh, the hot tub does not have a heater, so... The hot tub is broken. I'm, I'm gonna be bringing okay. Parkser boiling water. Welcome to the business stream. I hope you hope everybody learns a lot. I cannot think because this is so cold. Okay, well, the first question for you. <laughs> how's the water, Parkser? Extremely cold! Uh, it appears like my business, official business suit is floating. Yeah, um, you look great. My tie is erect. <laughs> yeah, you look great. Here, one sec. I know what'll help you. Okay. Um... Ah! <laughs> Okay. All right, let's get on with the let's get on with the business questions. First off, will you ever say I love you back to Doug? I am literally shivering. Hold on. Because let me get you some boiling water. You go ahead okay. and answer. That'll be okay. I'm also getting a little dizzy. Probably not because that would be too off-brand and uncharacteristic of me. However, just to be clear, just because something is not said does not mean it is not true. I am literally going to get sick. Oh, it is like actually boiling. It is steaming and bubbling boiling. How close okay. do you want it? I'm not sure. I've never done this before. You are literally shivering. I am actually shivering. Uh, it's, it's, it's not that cold. It's really not. It cold. is extremely I'll go cold. Here. Okay, how do I get to the? Okay, I need to swim to the. <laughs> yeah, Percher doesn't like swim or anything. I don't like hot. I don't like water in general. <sighs> okay, that was. That was helpful for like two seconds. I could pee in the pool. Right? <laughs> I don't want you to pee in the pool. Okay, I'm also getting extremely dizzy because I'm moving wanna... around. Next business question for you. If one wanted to start a multi-level marketing business that happened to be pyramid shaped, what would be the best way to start? <laughs> Wait, I literally cannot think because I'm just <laughs> shiveringly cold. Why don't you get out of the water? <laughs> I'm now extremely dizzy. The best way to start would be probably not to start because even though it'll be productive now, eventually you will get prosecuted for it. However, if you insist on starting a pyramid scheme, you should find something that is interesting to people and can convince them to make an initial investment. Probably something that would be compelling to the general public. I'm still extremely freezing cold. I can't tell if I'm colder up here because now I am evaporating. I can pour boiling water on you. I, I can pee on you. Not like on a jellyfish. Me. Do you have more po pots of boiling water? No, I just had the one. <laughs> okay, well that's not helpful. <laughs> I can try to use the sink over there. Yes, yeah, so if you can get hot water, All right, be okay. fantastic. Well, while I do that, the next question. Parkser, very important business inquiry. Would you rather have unlimited bacon, but no video games, or unlimited games, hold on. Would you rather have unlimited bacon, but no more video games, or games, unlimited games, but no more games? Neither. That question does not make sense. If they intended to ask whether or not I would have bacon or games, I'd probably pick games. Uh, because I don't really eat too much bacon anyway. No, no, no. The question is, would you rather have unlimited bacon, but no more video games, or games, unlimited games, but no more games? Okay, so then the options boil down to, huh, boil. I'm not boiling. The, the options come down to either I have unlimited bacon, or I just give up games with nothing in return, which in that case, I would take the unlimited bacon. Parker, so, have you taken any drugs in your life? This is a serious question. Answer pretty please. I mean, many things count as drugs. I tend to avoid things meth. like- Meth. I've never done meth. Crystal meth. I have never done any form of meth, including crystal meth. Turbo meth. I have not, that I believe counts as, is that even a thing? Sure you haven't. I'm not winking. It may look like I'm, am I inadvertently winking because I'm shivering? Uh, you like, I think you kind of like, gave me a little like, huh, That's, okay, like a little, then. you know, a little like, eh, eh, a little on. shiver. I need to adjust my outfit to ensure I am maximally business professional. At Parkster, we've gotten through like five questions. How much longer do you think you can stand this? <laughs> I feel like at this rate I could go for like a decent amount of time, Okay. but that is probably at the expense of my health. Because right now I feel like I am uh, producing a lot of adrenaline because I literally just more or less took an ice bath yeah. and then never actually came out of the ice bath fully. For the record, I'm not trying to talk, talk shit about Parkster. It's not that cold. It this is, is not freezing it cold. It is not freezing it is cold water. Freezing it is cold. I, I, oh, I, business question. I need help getting out of Doug's basement. Any tips or tricks? Just get out. Take the steps up, open the door, and walk out. How do they escape the traps? All right, next question. How many times have you shot your gun? That's a good question about business. I wouldn't say it's about business. Probably in the low... In the line of business, how many times have you shot your gun? In the line gun? of business, zero. In terms of like actually shooting a firearm, probably in the low few thousands, because every time I go to like a training session, it's usually between one to 200-ish rounds, I think. 
So that's like 100 people that you shoot each time? No, it's... Or one person that you shoot 100 times? I shoot one target oh. 100 or to 200 times, or like multiple targets. Parts of the human beings. Talk about they're them not, like... They're not human beings. Uh, in terms of like literal live human beings, or even dead human beings, it is zero. Yet. I mean, hopefully ever, but... I mean, technically, you're not wrong when you say yet. So, like, thousands of times in total? Like, a low few thousands, I think. But all for training purposes. With no wink. Okay, a lot of people seem genuinely interested in this. What is your opinion on renting versus buying a home? You have traveled a lot, so you must be renting, staying in a hotel a lot. So, renting versus buying is... Uh, Wait, some hot water. <sighs> okay, is heavily dependent on your personal situation. Uh, there are a lot of factors to consider, including stuff like uh, whether or not you have job security, or like if you get terminated, being in a house, an owner-occupied property is going to limit the breadth of where you can find a new job. <laughs> oh. This one is not boiling, right? Oh. Okay. okay. You were the one that was adamant this would work. <laughs> Still extremely cold. It also depends on how much loose capital you have. So if you have the money to invest in a property and you want to owner occupy it, I guess that is fine. But consider that there is an opportunity cost. Housing market is very uncertain right now. It seems like the market is going dramatically up, but there is the element of, at least in the United States, just to clarify, I am a United States citizen. All of the business that I conduct is within the United States, apart from like occasional international contractors. So I don't know for sure. But keep in mind that the United States recently printed an astronomical amount of money during the COVID-19 pandemic. So even though the markets look like they are doing fine, I don't think it's actually fine. So that is something to keep in mind. The housing market is extremely volatile at this time. So you should consider that before purchasing a property. A lot of people claim that renting is just throwing money away, but that is absolutely not the case. A lot of times there are abstract or non there's non quantifiable benefits that you can get from renting and the mobility that you have the peace of mind that like for example you don't have to suffer catastrophic losses in case of a natural disaster or something like that so there's like factors like that to consider uh there are a lot of good resources online when it comes to are you by chance zooming in really close to my face because i see you no i'm checking focus this lens can't zoom don't worry. I literally don't believe you. You are literally trolling. Chat. Chat can tell. Chat. Have I, I don't have chat. Camera? I am wet. No, you can read it right there. Where? <laughs> I literally do not have chat. It's so close we can see your eyelashes right now. We can see your nose hairs. <laughs> okay. Does, does this angle work better for my nose hairs? I recommend looking up online resources because, to be clear, I am not a real estate agent and I am not a financial. On not on me. It's not boiling. Wait, 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 well, wait, wait. I mean, still not on Just me. Just put that in, in the water and have him put his foot in. Yeah, okay, here we go. <sighs> That's not how water works. So now just put your feet in that. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, that that makes sense. Okay, but let's. Oh my god. Okay, let's stay. Let's stay focused on what everybody's here for, which is business. Okay, next business question. What are your thoughts on Up Dog? I have no opinions on Up Dog. I don't think he fell for it, chat. Nice try. How many porn stars have you done business with? I generally don't disclose the number or the identities of people I work with. We generally have, I'm, there's no wink to that. Also, this water is already extremely cold again. <laughs> well, yeah, you dunked the whole thing. All right, I'll go get more. So prior to, prior to conducting or entering an engagement letters, we usually have a non-disclosure agreement where, oh, where we, uh, hold on. I need to fix my business suit. Okay. I do want to clarify. Uh, Parkshire's not playing this up. He, yesterday, was not willing to put a single foot in the water because it made him dizzy. So this is putting himself through a lot of pain right now. I'll generally sign non-disclosure agreements where the definition of confidential information does almost always include the existence of the actual contract itself. So I almost never disclose who I work with. However, I let the other person breach that and disclose it if they want to. So the best way to find out would be technically to go to other people to and every ask, porn star. Basically, yes, because I'm not going to breach that confidentiality agreement. Also, to clarify, I'm not starring in adult entertainment films with them. I am providing business advisory services to them without a wink. I saw a wink. You guys can't, because he zoomed back out, so they can't if, see. If there was a wink, it was a shiver, because I'm cold again. Oh, this is a good business question. How marketable do you think you would be as a plushie? Probably not marketable at all, actually, because a lot of times, in terms of, like, merchandise in general, including plushies... Wait, you replied to this. Yeah, so I... <laughs> 
Archer, these were supposed to... Do you read so, all these in advance? Not all of them, but I did... I, <laughs> this, I did read, that was the whole point! I read a bunch of them last night because you, you pinged everyone in Discord. And the questions were so catastrophically bad that I felt bad for the people who actually asked real questions. So I answered like a handful of real questions before okay. I realized I probably should just wait until today. Yes. So that was late last night. Okay. The questions suck. Like 98% of these questions are awful. <laughs> So, for plushies and merchandise in general, a lot of times you have to market those to children. So, like, there are adults who collect merchandise or, like, collectibles, but a lot of times the main market you want to target for toys is children. And I feel like I'm not very child-friendly. Uh, I've, I've always thought you... that about you as well. Ah, uh, more hot water. Long story short, probably not at all. Maybe just pour it into the soup. Hold both your hands in. Oh. Ah! Wait, you, you can't get dizzy. We have to be able to eat 10 pounds of seafood. How's that? It's very warm. See, the hands was like a trick. <laughs> Would, okay, it's cold again. <laughs> you bring more hot water? I'm actually, I want to know the answer to this. Would dual wielding handguns be practical or more any more practical than just using a single firearm? And before you answer, why don't you demonstrate? Ah! Okay, I'm, I'm cold and dizzy again, so I forgot the question. <laughs> Stop getting in the water. It makes you dizzy. Oh. You pre-read all the questions and keep jumping in the water. I forgot that. What's the question? <laughs> Would dual wielding handguns be practical or any more practical than just using a single firearm? You say to shoot it at the camera? I say don't shoot it at the camera. That's oh. Yeah. That's Why not? More That's water. Wet, tart, very <laughs> nice lens. Uh, it's pretty funny though. It is, pre it is <laughs> pretty it's funny. funny. It is pretty funny. I think we should see if Parkser is qualified to talk about guns based on whether or not he can shoot the camera lens directly. Okay, I'm getting really dizzy, but at least this is warm. If you are literally so skilled at one-handing firearms that you can accurately hit your target, then yes, I guess it's more bullets. You don't have access to like an automatic firearm or something. I guess in those very fringe case scenarios, it would, but in an overwhelming majority of situations, it would not. I think this the is, gun is waterlogged. This is very flaccid. Ah, this is nice. Stop warm. going in! We're about to eat food! It's warm! Ah, so dizzy, but so warm. Wait, why are, you, why are you... What am I supposed to do with this? Am I supposed to keep trying until I hit the lens? Yeah, sure. Okay. No. Alright, last chance. Last chance. The funny man is saying yes. The camera operator is saying no. It'd be funny! One shot. I've already had two shots and I missed. One shot. Yeah. Okay, I guess I can angle it up. That's too high. Then, I mean, I angled it directly at it and it fell like on the yeah, floor. So, yeah, you have to go higher for sure. <laughs> hit the I hit the screen. <laughs> okay. Okay. I am curious about this one. If I were to take all of my money and dump it in a river, would that be tax deductible? No, because you are intentionally doing it. If you had if you had your money stolen and it got thrown into a river, that's tax deductible? Yes, to clarify, I am not an accountant. I'm not a financial advisor and this information may be outdated. In the United States, there was recently a law passed by the Trump administration that made changes to this, but if you are a victim of theft and you can prove that it was an actual theft, then yes, I believe that is tax deductible. Your theft losses can be tax deductible if it is not covered by insurance. But yes, if you get something stolen and it is of significant value, it would be worth consulting a financial advisor about that because there may be some tax deductible opportunities for you for the cost of what you got stolen. But if you destroy your own property, then no. Wait, why didn't you tell me that before I threw all my money in the pool last night? You can go get it. Let's do a few more. How are you feeling? Extremely dizzy and very cold. You should get out so that you can stop being dizzy so you can eat food. Water, hot water. Put your hand, put your hand in that. feels exactly the same put your hand in there. There you go. So, so, right here, it there gets you. nice and warm for like a good three seconds. Uh -huh. And uh, now it's cold again. Now I'm busy again. Okay. Here, Barry, why don't you ask some questions? Are you gonna go get your money? No, you can have it. I'll go get the waxing. Oh. How long will you need before you can eat food? Maybe like tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, I'm extremely dizzy, right? I'm, I'm not showing it. You should, you should get out of the pool. You, that's, you forgot to. Never mind. What? You didn't forget anything. That's, that's okay. Are you okay? No, but yeah. What is supply and demand? But explain it with food. Does water count as? As food? Well, usually they say food and water, so no. Uh, hello, squirrel. I've made a determination that food, water is indeed 
food for this example. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So supply would be the hot or boiling water. And demand is my need for the hot and boiling water because this hot tub is broken and it's actually a cold tub. And I'm going to freeze to death. I'll probably get sick tomorrow. I am literally shivering. Um, so the supply, because it is lower than my demand, because I demand an entire tub full of hot water, but there is limited supply. So I could incentivize Barry to give me hot water faster by, for example, threatening to push him into the pool if he does not. Okay. This is oh, I'm Oh, I'm dizzy again. Were you actually oh. gonna push me in the pool? Next question. What ice cream flavors will you be giving the mods? I don't know yet. For those who are unfamiliar, during the Monterey Bay Aquarium, no, my gun. During the Monterey, <laughs> during the Monterey Bay Aquarium charity stream, <laughs> we, one of the stretch goals, oh, okay, hello. Again. One of the stretch goals was to give the Dug Dug moderators in general a, uh, an ice cream party. That is in progress. We don't know what flavor, but I guess it depends on how we do the logistics of it. I assume we're going to do a poll for the mods to see what the best effective way to do this is. And then I'll probably just, to make it funny, if somebody requests something very strange, we'll get like one container of the really strange flavor, like hot dog. Yeah. Like hot dog ice cream. Yeah, I could... Uh, Have you tried hot, it? I think it's actually... Hot dog ice cream? Yeah. You've tried it? Yeah. Is it sweet or does it just taste like a hot dog? Uh, it just tastes like a hot dog. But it's like a really weird texture, so like you get really confused. Next question. If you could choose any breed of dog to promote your business, what breed would you pick? Oh, what's the dog that's like basically a dinosaur? <laughs> Not a dinosaur. What's the dog that's like, like really, it's like a Belgian Malinois or something? Does anybody know? Someone, someone said Velociraptor. Velocir no! Bel <laughs> it's like a Belgian Mal... mal how about a, how about a Poodle? No. <laughs> yeah, okay, we can go with that. Let's see. <laughs> Wait, you already answered this question! Wait, what is the most- a good question? <laughs> Just to be clear. You so already answered this! Doug posted this on Discord last night and asked people to go on Reddit to submit questions. It wasn't questions. for you! I like, saw the ping, so I opened the thing, and I was like, <laughs> huh, let me browse through these questions. And then I realized that 98% of them are absolute garbage. So for the few percent that like actually were good questions, I started answering them. I was like, hey, this person actually wants my assistance. And then I realized oh, that, that I should probably not do that and wait for today. Well, what was the question though? Uh, the question was what is the most financially affordable price for a missile launcher for somebody with a middle class income same goes with a private jet a question so, that he has already answered so for in Reddit. <laughs> so to start for missile launchers grenade launchers or any kind of firearms i'm not the best person to ask uh, i know very little about firearms apart from just the two that i own so if you go to pretty much any gun store or gun range you will find staff members there i'm still freezing cold you will find staff members there who are going to help you understand like what your options are and where you can find firearms like that. So I recommend doing that for the missile launcher. As for a private jet in terms of middle class income, one thing that is very important to remember is that there are a lot of maintenance costs or like repairs, upkeep, and other staffing costs associated with purchasing a private jet. So even- I feel like more ice speed. Go get him, go get him, <sighs> go get him. Dude, so we're, uh, we're about to eat food. Go it's ready in like three minutes. Oh, you're sitting at your foot. Yeah, you're sitting on my foot. So if you, oh, I'm so dizzy again. Oh, oh, I forgot the question. What was the question? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Birthday. Oh, the private jet. So if you, even if you have high net worth and can afford a private jet, make sure you have allocate enough where you either have like ongoing dividends that you're earning from your net worth because if you have a middle class income it's gonna be very difficult to afford your normal lifestyle in addition to all the upkeep and maintenance costs for the jet so there is an alternative for private jet ownership which wouldn't exactly be ownership it would just be having access to a semi-private jet lately there have been companies like jet suite x surf air set jet xo uh, those are all companies where they basically operate a chartered private jet service, but you only have to buy a single seat or a set of seats rather than chartering the whole pl plane as a private jet. So uh, I recommend checking out companies like that. I used to fly quite a bit on JSX uh, in between Hollywood. You flew private jets? It's. Uh, I literally just explained that it is not actually a private jet. It but is like. It's like a semi private, yes. That's, that's awesome. JSX. It's not actually private. You can purchase 
a seat on there. Pricing ranges between like $300 to $600 for like round trip between Las Vegas and Hollywood Burbank. So I would take that sometimes. Uh, usually I would take uh, like major commercial airlines because it's substantially cheaper and it's not actually that much of a difference if for a short flight. But if I needed to get to specifically Hollywood Burbank on very short notice, a lot of times JSX would be a reasonable option because commercial flights, the prices will spike up substantially once you get closer to the takeoff time. So like those are, there's niche situations where it actually would make sense for just a normal person to take JetSuite X or any kind of like semi-private chartered jet. And if you want a semi-private or like a jet experience as a middle-class person, I think that's sort of your best bet to get it. But yeah, the key takeaway here is don't get baited into purchasing extremely expensive things because the upkeep and maintenance of that is going to creep up on you. A lot of times people say you shouldn't purchase something unless you know you can buy two of it and that second uh, portion of it is going to be for the upkeep part. Hello.